what are your plans for once you get out of out of prison? What are you going to do to help become an asset to the community versus being a liability to the community? What are your plans and your goals when you get out? Okay, so my initial plan upon release is I am paroling to Millersburg, Ohio, and I'm actually going to live in an Amish town for a little while. I have a friend who owns a horse farm, and she does, like, equine therapy and riding lessons, and she breeds horses and dogs and, like, all kinds of stuff. Her and her family does. But I'm going to stay there with her. She's a Christian lady, and she is going to teach me some different skills and I'm already a part of the Justice League, so my first plan is to get involved with them and then kind of build a network around there so I can begin to help people inside of here and people that have been released. Uh, long term, though, my goal is to really own a wellness center, and I want to gear it towards uh, younger adults like teenagers um, through like age 25, 30, because I feel like um, a lot, especially juveniles for sure, kind of just get brushed under the rug. Um, I feel like parents today try to treat their children as kids uh, more than, more, or adults more than kids. So I really want to focus on working with them. Okay. So now, when you first got the, got the prison or whatever, right? How long did it take you to, to realize, okay, I don't want to do what I did before because you do have an extensive criminal history. That's your past. So what just made you say, okay, I don't want to do this no more. I want to change for the best. Okay, so when I was in county, I did eight months in county, mm -hmm. and that's actually when I realized, like, I just can't live this way anymore. But I honestly didn't really know what to do at the time. I got into the Bible. Um, I started reading self-help books and all of that. And all of that kind of planted seeds for me. Well, when I got here, I was very cautious with the type of people that I hung around. I kind of stayed to myself. I didn't really get involved in a lot of things because at the time I was a high-level security, so there wasn't a lot of options. Um, but... I, like I said, did a lot of self-help studying. Now, my actions and my thinking process was still a lot the same, so it took me about five years to really understand that, okay, the problem is the way that I think because I was always taught that I was a specific person. I was a specific way, so I believed that, and I really thought that the cards that I was dealt was the hand that I had to play. I didn't understand that I could change, you know, who I was. And when I finally realized that was when I started to transform. So it was about between five and seven years after I was here. Okay. That, that, that's a good thing. At least it didn't take you forever because some people, it takes them forever to get it. Because like I got to tell people, like, being in prison, you meet some of the, the coolest people in prison that, yeah. that, that are good people. And um, it was a gentleman, um, this, I was listening to This some call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. I was listening to a young lady's um, live stream today by the name of Sarah Indipity. And her husband name is Brandon, and he's been to prison. And he was basically saying that... Um, People in prison who's been in prison, they look at life totally different when they yeah. get, when they get out. And you know, and I, I thought about well, this guy. He's right because you know when I came home, I was like, hey, I got to leave that over there and, and and come over here to not go back over there anymore. So that that was you know I looked at that as what he said was was very accurate. So um, absolutely. And, and and you you agree with that, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think the prisons make a big difference, too, because I was actually blessed to come to this prison because there's a lot of opportunities. Um, there was, a, you know, the administration at the time was very empowering. We had a warden who was phenomenal, and she was all about women's empowerment. And they just really provided a lot of good programs and groups to get into. And I think 
had I have gone somewhere where they didn't offer that, I may not have changed. You know, I may not have never have have gotten it. You know, like some people say. But it really takes, you know, your environment is huge. So I can understand how some people never get out of that mentality because, like, you know, here in this institution, we have, like, 3,000 women. And in some of the dorms, like, it's it, it's crazy. There's drugs. You know what I'm saying? People act like they do on the streets. I am fortunately in an honor dorm where people don't act like that. But had I have been stuck out there my entire sentence, who knows? I probably wouldn't have changed. We're creatures of habit. So you have to surround yourself with positive people and people moving in a forward direction in order to really change. And you have to take ownership for your actions. That's the biggest thing. You have to get off of your own pedestal and say, you know what? Hey, I screwed up. It is what it is. I got to do better now. Exactly. So with that being said, do you take full responsibility for your actions of killing your mother? A thousand percent. Absolutely. Okay. So, and, and that's great because, like I say, just talking to you, you know, you, you, you seem like, okay, you're not the person that the media got a lot of the stuff wrong on. So let's put that out there. They got a lot of stuff wrong. And you, co- mm-hmm. and you corrected it. And um, I salute you for that. So um, let's, let's go on to, a, to something else. Now, let me ask you this. When you first came to prison, and you know your your case was kind of a high profile case, did you catch any any static from any inmates there? Um, no, not at all. There's, you know, my case coming here to this large prison wasn't as hope, um, high profile as like other cases. Um, there was a few rumors that had gone around. Um, you know, they said that I had chopped her body up and, you know, things like that. But nobody had, like, ever said anything directly to me. Um, it, it just was never like that here, you know? When you were on the outside, did you have a high school diploma or you didn't have a high school diploma? Um, I got my GD when I was 17. I ended up getting emancipated because I did about four years in a juvenile facility and when I got out, uh, my mother and I, you know, we, we just could never live together. So my parole officer agreed to have me emancipated if I got my GED. So I did that when I was 17. Okay. And so there, because I, like I say, you're in the newspaper quite a bit. So mm-hmm. you were in the, that I know of quite a bit. Like, just sitting there talking, because once upon a time, let's just say the media was not your friend at one point in time. And uh, now that you're there and they got to know who you are, it seems like they became a friend because they were putting you in the newspaper and everything. How do you feel about yeah. the media now with that situation? Um, you know, I don't really have anything bad to say. I just... I just feel like, you know, everything in this world is just so political, and you just never really know what to believe anymore. Um, The problem is, is I don't completely blame the media for the simple fact that I kind of brought that on myself, you know, at the time when I caught my case, because I wasn't the greatest person. You know, I had a long history. While the facts that they put out there aren't true, and I don't agree with that, I feel like they... This call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. I feel like they shouldn't be allowed to do things like that, but unfortunately, you know, that's kind of what our, our world has resulted in, you know? It's, it's just something that we can't control, but I try to not even pay attention to anything at all. Like, when I don't even watch the news or anything because I just know that there's just so much inaccurate information. Um, but I, I just... I mean, I just do what I can to be who I am today, and I my one of my main goals was to just turn my reputation around, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job of that. So. Okay. Yeah, because I I I'm a, I'm a firm believer in giving second chances because you know they they always Absolutely. they always uh, inmates they don't deserve a second chance. Uh, let them all rot in jail, or when they get out of jail, just. Mm-hmm. Ig- ig- ignore them and you know and then when you do stuff like that then that inmate ends up re reoffending yeah and going back to prison and and that's one thing we want to do we don't want inmates to feel that okay they have to reoffend and become repeat offenders and keep going back to prison because there's a lot of things that you can learn while you're in prison 
now that you guys got the tablets and you know the, the law libraries are still in some states and you know you can take that and apply it to everyday living out here and come out here and you can and live a great life and, and, get a, and get a career going because what you're saying that you're going to do it seems like it's going to be great yeah, and I have a I have a lot of great connections. That um, was one thing that I do do in here is I I am involved in anything that comes through these gates. I don't care if it's something that interests me or not because I believe in building a network. And you know, in order for me to be successful, that's exactly what I have to do. Um, so I have a huge network outside of here. And um, you know, one thing that I wanted to say is is, is prison is a mindset for real. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, we all know that there's a stigma behind us because we've been incarcerated or whatever, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's not the world's fault. It's not anybody else's fault uh, if we can't go out there and succeed. Yes, it can be difficult for some. I think that there are a lot of disadvantages, but we learned how to make it in the prison system, and this yes. is probably one of the hardest places to succeed. So if you can do it in here, there's no reason why you can't do it out there. It's all a matter of how bad you want it, for it, real. Exactly, and now these states are making it much more easier to get your record expunged when you come out of prison so that you will be as, when someone's looking you up for a job, it'll be like, okay, you never had a felony a day in your life. So, and I think, yeah. I think in Ohio, you, it's up to five felonies. How many felony convictions do you have, if you don't mind me asking? Um, well, let's see, I have... I think on, on this charge is what, like seven? Mm hmm. Yeah, I think in, in this sentence, I, get, I think I got like seven of them. Okay, I think, um, yeah. I think if it all happened at one, because here in Michigan, if it all happened the same day. In one it, crime? Yeah, one yeah. crime, it counts as only one crime. Yeah. Because I have a, a, a crime like that, I have what? Five felony, uh, four or five felony convictions, but it, on my record, because it happened that one day and it was dealing with that one crime within 24 hours, yeah. it, it's only, it counts as an, an expungement, it counts as only one conviction. But right. in the state of Michigan, I right now I'm going through a lawyer because, you know, I have violent felonies. And, and, and if you have yeah. violent, if violent felonies, you know, assault with weapons or anything dealing mm -hmm. with a weapon, which I have a few of those, you will not be eligible to have your record expunged. But as I was speaking yeah. to a lawyer, he said, no, there's a way around that. And, you know, I'm going to talk to a lawyer tomorrow about that situation and get my record expunged. So, you know. Yeah. That this is call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. And I think the great thing for people like us is that it seems like these days nobody in the world wants to work. So... There's all of these jobs available to us that we should be all right. Yes, because I know a couple of <laughs> felons that came home from the penitentiary on parole. And during the, the uh, pandemic that was going on, they were working at um, Ford Motor Company. And the people at Absolutely. Ford told one of my guys, hey, look, don't worry. When the pandemic is over, you got a job here. You're permanently hired in because you wanted to work and you didn't want to stay yeah. at home. So he, at the pandemic, pretty much is over, and he's in there. He's working. He's been there for going on two years now. So I'm happy for him, and he served. He yeah. served about what? He served eight years in the penitentiary. So he's home now, and he's in in Ford Motor Company right now working. Is it Ford That's or great. GM? I want to say is I want to say it's Ford. It might be GM. I don't. I don't. I forgot which one. Which one? I think it's Ford because he got the big truck, you know, the the, the, yeah. the big truck thing. So I think it's Ford. So I think he's at Ford. Um, but yeah. I'll find either way, it's a good job. It, exactly, because he's making almost like twenty five dollars an hour, and he's yeah. and, you know, and he's happy with that. He he has a son now. His son is uh, when he came home, he met a beautiful woman uh, while he was locked up in prison. They got a son together and. They're they're married now, and you know they have a That's nice great. home. And son is on the football team with with the with the with the little pal thing. So, you know, this is like he said, this is a life that you could never have told him that he would be living. Absolutely. 
So, hey, it's out there for you as well when you come home. You know what I'm saying? So just just think about it. When you come home, there's a lot of jobs and programs in play that you can get your record expunged and you can go out here and, and get anything that you want. But I'm quite sure the media presence that you had, not the bad media presence, but the good uh, media presence that you have had, it's going to take you a long way when you get out here because there's going to be a lot of women that want to work with you and want to give you that opportunity. And you know why they're going to want to give you that opportunity? Because they're going to say, wow, this woman went to prison for this bad crime, but she's been in prison doing so much good. So if we get her here working with us, that's going to make us look good. So, Absolutely. So it's going, to look, it's going to be good for you no matter how you cut it. When you get out of here, it's not the same like it used to be back in the day. You go to prison, don't nobody want you, nobody wants to want to hire yeah. you. <laughs> it's totally different today. I guarantee you that. Yeah. Guarantee you that. Well, listen, Erica, I want to thank you for sitting down and giving us this interview. But before we leave, absolutely, I love it. Before we leave, I want you to give your information. And that's if you want to, because a lot of the women here they like to write some of the the inmates, and you know, talk to them on the one on one level. So if you want to give your information, please do that. All right. So it's Erica Orta six zero seven four two at O R W fourteen seventy nine Collins at C O L L I N S Avenue. Marysville, Ohio, 43040. Okay. Can they also write you on JPay as well? Yep. Yep. I'm on JPay too. Absolutely. So listen, just take her inmate number, and she's in Ohio. It's going to ask you the state of Ohio. Put her inmate number in there where it asks you the inmate number, and then boom, save her, and then there you go, and you can start writing her. You got to buy the e-stamps. To write her and and it's 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 more quicker that way, like instant. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so, definitely. You know, the, and I'm quite sure you would rather receive the emails over the the letters, but either or is good. Uh, you know, so so like I say, thank you very much, and I I appreciate you for for. I appreciate with us. you, and I appreciate you for also coming on to say that you will be a part of you be the judge because that's going to be great. Yes, absolutely. Any, any, anything that I can do to inspire people, to help them understand, or anything, I, I absolutely love doing it. So whatever I can do to help. Great. Well, we're giving this a wrap, and we out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Peace and love, and thank you for listening.